So in today's episode, we're going to talk about villains and how do you make one. Hey, what's up? I'm GR, this is Player Base, channel about ludology, study the dynamics of play. And today in the series about tabletop role-playing games, we're going to discuss how would you make a character who is a villain as not only the dungeon master, but also the players, because it's actually an integral process. And here's how we're going to go about it. When you set up the game and you have already in play uh, a couple of things, session one or two, you don't necessarily have to have the villain or the main antagonist already prepared. And the reason for that is because if you have the dynamic and the general sense of how the game is going to go, because you have a sense of what you're presenting as the game master and uh, what you're looking for as the player, and you guys have worked together to come to an understanding, after a session or two, you'll get a better sense of how those things, your expectations and your impetus work out together in play. And from there, you will get a sense of where the tension is really. And then from there, you will develop the villain. And what is the villain? The villain is the main force of resistance against whatever the players are attempting to do. So it doesn't have to be an evil mastermind. They don't even have to be particularly smart. They don't even have to be evil. They just have to be in opposition to what the players are doing. And in order to do that in a way that's really believable and engaging and allows people to immerse themselves and really lose themselves in the game, it's better to wait because villains don't really come prepackaged. You know, uh, enemies that you make like in, you know, grammar school or in a workplace, they arise through the tensions that arise between people. And that is the same thing that you're going to do in this game. You don't actually have to have the person there, in, which is to say the NPC doesn't have to be directly interacting with the characters. However, if they are, that's perfectly fine also. What's, what I'm trying to emphasize here, what's immaterial, is uh, where the villain is in terms of proximity to the character so much as how they're the origin of the force of resistance. So when we were talking about importing, uh, imparting information to the players, and we talked about three different ways of presenting information. And we talked about the two cousins, right? Now, if you're working for the one cousin, the, the Baron, then the Count is going to be the main villain. The Count might be a better person than your, than your boss, but he's the villain because he's the direct source of opposition. And it may not necessarily be that that guy is sending orcs or guards after you. It may just be that they're a competing interest. And so in their competing interests, they're going to take actions and move things around that are going to be obstacles. It may be that if you're just, you know, adventuring parties looking to dungeon delve, you've got another dungeon delving party in the same area who's also looking to hit up the same scores, in which case, you know, it's very easy to see where that's going to go. You know how that's going to go. It's not complicated because making a, a villain party or a villain character of a couple of NPCs, you know, you don't have, they don't have to have tremendously deep backstories in order for them to be the primary agents of resistance for the characters. Like in the case of the adventuring party, you know, they could just be down there uh, setting traps or, um, you know, causing a ruckus and then misdirecting it towards the players or stealing stuff and then still making it look like there's treasure there to waste the, the party's time. But if you do that, you got to do it in a way that really makes it clear that it was the other party and frustrates them so that they don't feel like they've just been, you know, jerked around uh, with no satisfaction all day. That could be really bad. So, so the way that you get around that is when they get there, you know, there's like a note or um, clearly there's some kind of evidence, like maybe one of the boots of the other party is there, you know, which they recognized from before, some type of clue that you know that they'll get. Then the other thing is when you are developing this character, the more the party goes in a certain direction, the more intense the resistance periodically that the other enemy will have, that the opposition will have. And yeah, that's enough to start off with. And I don't think this video really needs to be that much longer. But tomorrow, tomorrow, we're going to talk about how to make uh, a legitimately evil character. All right, see you.